You can go to dogstocoasttocoast.com if you would like to stream this. And on there, you'll also find another app. You'll find another uh, way to listen. You'll find another streaming service that we use, and it's called uh, Radio Loyalty. Yeah. And you win prizes and all kind of stuff. Because if we didn't pay you, we'd be sitting here talking to ourselves. I like to do that Howard Cosell for the dramatic effect. Do you now? Anyhow. we have got our guest Patty on the line. Patty's here. And uh, now, Patty, I'll, I'll give me a, a brief explanation of this program. It is not pro-Obama. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I, if I could just have a few moments with him, just a few moments, because this country... Oh, I'd like that, too. This country has is, is gone to hell. It is just the most unrealistic thing that I ever thought I'd ever see. And people have trouble with me. They say, well... Yeah, right. You know, the stuff you say, come on, he's thrown in with ISIS. No, he's a Muslim. His formal schooling, his formal schooling was Islam. He speaks perfect Arabic, and he throws in with uh, every Muslim cause. That's not a beheading. What, what are you talking about? Why? That's workplace violence. God, we used to be, back in the old days, we had beheadings all the time. Look, oh, yeah, of course you did. It was Kenya. And, of course, the border's wide open. We have ISIS rolling in here. And I have a new theory that uh, I was putting two and two together. And it occurred to me, <clears throat> as I watched uh, the networks last night, I wasn't hearing a word about our fake war on ISIS. Not a thing. Did we drop any bombs? Where is ISIS? Because everything was Ebola. This is perfect, and that's why he has left the air travel open to come into the United States of America. Because, and it's starting to bulge, too. And if Ebola spreads down into South America, that open border and that bridge he ordered built uh, is going to kill everybody because they're going to come rolling up into Texas. Texas is not a good place to be when it comes to Ebola. Although they have moved the um, the two uh, people that were still alive, of course the the gentleman from uh, Liberia, he passed away, and of course according to his family, it's because he was covered. <laughs> He's covered, and y'all didn't do nothing. No, they're not qualified to do it. That Dallas hospital is pitiful. All right, what town? Do you, what town are you from, by the way? Well, I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, but I'm currently in Cincinnati because my uh, son is at the hospital up here. So okay, we're, so we're having testing and surgery. Now, give us some background on this. You have Obamacare, and correct? No, well, we have private insurance, and we've always had private insurance since 2005, but all the Obamacare mandates and taxes and everything have caused our costs to skyrocket. Um, I was just explaining this to someone today because a lot of people seem to um, forget that Obamacare is not just about the insurance exchanges. Obamacare, the ACA, the I don't like to call it the Affordable Care Act because it's unaffordable. It's totally. It, it, it covers everyone's insurance. Our, our employer sent a letter out last year stating that their health care costs were going to go up $7.4 million dollars in 2014, above and beyond the $64 million they paid in 2013. So those, and they said in the letter that those costs would be passed on to us, some of the costs would be passed on to us, and how is that done through higher co-pays, deductibles, out-of-pocket maxes. And this is all because of the law, because Obamacare does not just affect the insurance that you can purchase from the exchanges, it also regulates all insurance, private insurance, and whatnot. All right. So, what she was, uh, what poor Bam Bam was trying to explain to me earlier, is exactly what she and, just said. And, and you said it in fewer words, and my eyes aren't crossed. And, oh. and, and she says, "Well, you don't need Obamacare to be ripped off by Obamacare." Is that correct? Absolutely correct. We've, um, I mean, you know, just the fact that, that these these companies, you know, they, they like to tell you that evil corporations. Well, let me tell you what the evil corporation my husband works for has done. Last year, they paid out over half a million dollars for my family alone. 
$398,000 of that just for medication. And because their costs are going up, it, it's, it's simple economics. They're going to pass some of the cost on. We're, we're fortunate that he works for a very generous corporation and, um, and that they've, you know, taken in some of the costs themselves from Obamacare. But $7.4 million is a lot of extra money. And so we've seen the increases and now my children's life saving medications are no longer covered where they've been covered previously. All right. So, because of what Obamacare has done to everybody else, there's, there's, so you're saying basically there's no free market here. Oh, we haven't had a free market in over a century, but this is this is a less free market than free Obamacare. Right. Okay. Exactly. All right. Now, so uh, if Obamacare, say it doesn't exist, say we went back in time and gave Barack Obama's father a condom, which really would help out. And then we came back, and we would come back, of course, to a different world, one that where the borders are probably closed, and we're not about to get attacked by Muslims and Ebola. Um, without Obamacare, where does your financial situation stand? Well, before Obamacare, we were doing a lot better. Of course, we did have, we've always had high medical bills, and that was in a pre-Obamacare world. A true free market, if we could get to a true free market, less regulation, let these insurance companies compete across state lines. I mean, imagine if all of the insurance companies in the United States of America could compete inside of Ohio, North Carolina, Kentucky for your dollar. Costs will go down. We, you know, we need to have tort reform. We need actual patient-centered, you know, reform. I mean, Obama recently signed a, an executive order about antibiotics. A lot of people are missing this. He signed an executive order that by 2016, he wants the HHS to have in place a protocol for when your physician can prescribe antibiotics to you. So when you go to the doctor, you're not going to be going to the doctor saying, I have an infection uh, in, in my toe, my, my leg, in my head, wherever, and asking, you know, I need antibiotics. Doctors don't have to go look in the government manual to see if they can prescribe antibiotics, and that's not a free market. But we do need. I mean, there are there are reforms, and I don't I don't subscribe to repeal and replace. I just want to repeal Obamacare and have less government regulation because then the cost goes down for everyone across across the board. Okay, so we know that Ebola is Obama's best friend because it's taken everybody's eyes off what's going on in Syria and Baghdad. And that's where he's doing his dirtiest work is over there. You know, don't you find it a little surprising that suddenly he's paying attention to uh, Ebola? You know what I said? If you want more action and get what I believe, if you closed off and quarantined the countries with the problem, then we could settle and fix the problem before too many people are infected, and I think there's so many more than anybody knows about, because Obama lied, um, Ebola is airborne. And you can catch it from sitting in the same airspace as somebody else, especially if they sneeze. Okay, even though they could have had a, a napkin, those little little uh, bugs go flying through the air. You can't help that. You, you probably breathed in somebody's sneeze and not even realized that you did it. So it's airborne meaning it could spread like wildfire, so there's enough damage already done in this country. My theory is if he wants to keep the flights coming in from West Africa, then I say they all land in Washington, D.C., and from there they are checked. Now, how quickly do you think he would stop those flights from West Africa? Oh, they stop. I mean, in Congress, it might actually do something to stop them if we if, if they were coming in through D.C. That would. I, I think that's a great plan. You know, right Personally. there, right, right there at the uh, you know the Washington airport. You know, you you have you get them out on a tarmac, and uh, everybody does their checks. So if there is an Ebola patient, uh, Washington's going to have one hell of a problem because somebody's going to breathe that air in. But Obama will send them everywhere else. See, as long as his ass is safe. So tell me about your son and his medical conditions 
Is it is it two, Patty? It's both. I have two ones? two sons. Um, they have a disease called Schwachman Diamond Syndrome, mm -hmm. which is a genetic bone marrow failure syndrome. And then they have secondary mitochondrial disease. So we come up here to Cincinnati quite a bit because they have a bone marrow failure clinic. Um, so they see the most patients with Schwachman Diamond Syndrome between here and, and a clinic in Seattle. So we come up here for a lot of treatment. They get a lot of infections because they don't make enough white blood cells to fight infections. Mm -hmm. And those that they do make don't function properly. So it's um, we, we spend a lot of time at the hospital. So we were just at the hospital today, and I can tell you, the nurses and the health care providers, they are concerned about Ebola. They don't feel like they're prepared. Um, the one nurse who was doing the procedure on my son today actually said, he needs to close the border. And I said, amen, I, amen. I mean, they're afraid because that's where if, if somebody comes into this country with Ebola, they're going to the health care center to be treated. And these, they're, not, they're not prepared. But getting back to my son's, we, we have a lot of, of uh, you know, medical issues. It would take me two hours to go through all of them. All right. When you say now that uh, pre-Obamacare, before all the taxes and all the, the sneaky stuff started with regular private health insurance, you say that your costs now have doubled. Oh, they've, they've more than doubled. We used to average um, between 2005 and 2010 about 10000 to $12,000 a year in out-of-pocket costs not including our premiums, but now um, 2013, we had $27,000, just over $27,000. And here in 2014, we're closing in on it, uh, 20000 It's like 19700 when I added it up before I left on the trip. Is, did you say that was out-of-pocket? That's our out-of-pocket cost, oh yes. yes. And, 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 and the left will tell you that it's, it's not Obamacare, and they don't understand because, see, the left hasn't actually read the bill. So they don't understand that. Last year, our deductible did not go toward our out-of-pocket max. This year, your deductible goes toward your out-of-pocket max. Well, that's why everybody's, you know, out-of-pocket maxes went up. And then next year, your prescription co-pays will go toward your out-of-pocket max, which this year they do not. And what's going to happen next year is I fully suspect that our out-of-pocket max is going to be so high that it's not going to be any different for families like mine who reach their out-of-pocket max every single year. All right, now so right now – oh, sorry, I was in the – no, right now, we have so many medical bills. But. All right, so now there are no liberals listening to this show that will admit to it because I have, you know, pretty much racked them uh, like a pool <laughs> table, okay? And uh, they know that I know that they're stupid. They follow Obama like they're following uh, or they followed uh, Hitler uh, with the, uh, the, the Nazi party back in 1935. You know, up until there was nothing left in Germany, which is going to be what's happening in, in the United States. You know, you get enough ISIS over here, you get enough Ebola over here, and uh, Chancellor Obama gets to stay in office forever. Isn't that a horrifying thought? Oh, it, it, absolutely. And they follow him. I mean, it, it, they follow him like little sheep. I mean, it's, 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 it's insane. And, and, and unfortunately, we do have senators in Congress who follow him the same way, like Kay Hagan. Um, who's running for re-election in North Carolina, she votes with Obama 96% of the time. I saw that on your Facebook page. Oh, yes. I mean, and she, you know, I confronted her in 2010, and she said on camera that Obamacare would give us all the same health care that she and other member of Congress well, are afforded. Well, you know, it goes back to, to what you said. There's no open competition, and, and myself being in the industry, uh, you know, the insurance industry, um, once in sales, once as a health insurance uh, agent, actually, and, and now as an adjuster, it, you know, the bottom line is if there's not open competition for the purchase of the product, um, it, it's just not going to work. I mean, we have open competition with our auto insurance carriers and our home insurance carriers. Why can't we have it with our health insurance? And the health insurance industry has a greater opportunity because, you know, auto insurance, I understand why that's state regulated. We have certain guidelines, and I get that. But when it comes to a person's health, why shouldn't they be able to buy it in Ohio? Because their health isn't going to change in Ohio from Florida or Nebraska. You know, it's a person, and that person can go wherever that person may be, and their health is going to stick with them. So, I, I you know, I agree in free market. I, I agree in open competition, and, you know, I, I just think – it's the way to go because ultimately what, you know, Obamacare has done is just created 
its own insurance company where people are still paying a rate to have Obamacare based on their health and their income. And so if you make more, you're going to pay more. If you have a, a um, terminal illness or, or any type of illness, there may not be, there may not be a, um, an exclusion. Like you'll be able to purchase it, but you sure are going to pay for it. I mean, the, the healthy person is not going to pay the same rate as the person who unfortunately was diagnosed with cancer. It just doesn't work that way. So they've just created a government insurance company is what they've done, and they're really well. And all the insurance plans are the same. Don't forget that they're all right. the same. Right. Every one. If it did, so if you're a man, you don't have the choice to go get a plan without maternity care that you don't need. Right. And that's that's godly expensive. I mean, I remember as an agent, I told people, I said, look, mat purchasing maternity care is is just if you have to purchase private health insurance and you're not part of a group plan with your employer like your husband is or like I am. Um, it, you know, purchasing maternity care is ridiculous. It is just easier, it's probably more sensical to save the money and put it aside than have it in your insurance, to be honest with you. But, um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's crazy. So the man is going to pay the same amount of money for maternity care. And, you know, last time I checked, they can't pop out a baby. I don't know. I don't know now. <laughs> what? I read the, you know, I read the weekly world news. And they, they talk about man's going to have a baby one day. Now, have have you and your husband seen um, your deductibles change on the plan? Has that plan changed as far as your private health insurance? Yes, it, it has. So from 20, 2005 to 2010, this is this is mind blowing. From so fifty dollars is all that our deductible changed in those in that time period. Ten dollars a year, and our out of pocket max only changed by $500. So by 2010, we had um, $5,000 out-of-pocket max for our family, which we reach every year, and um, we had a $750 um, deductible. Now our deductible, because of Obamacare, is $1,950, so $2,000, and our out-of-pocket max is $7,500. Oh. And that's the other thing. And so, and then where we used to pay for prescription copays before Obamacare, we averaged about four to five thousand dollars in prescription copays, which don't go for out of pocket max. And um, last year we had close to ten thousand. I know it was over nine thousand. I'd have to look at the numbers again, but we're already over eight thousand dollars in prescription copays this year. And of course, now that their life saving medications are no longer covered, we're not quite sure. What we're going to do there, but you know, you know it's, it's a shame. Like, it's a shame. Uh, the medical industry itself is a scam, and then when you add insurance scams like Obamacare, and then what it's doing to you know, the private policies, which are scams too, because now they're not going to, you know, cover your life-saving medication for your children, which is kind of a frightening thing to hear somebody have to say. Because uh, the profit margin would go down. Instead of clearing a billion, they may only clear 900 million. You know, so that's those, it's sick. It's, it's totally sick. Now, this is what I want you to do. Make believe I'm a liberal. It's a stretch. But explain, if you were talking to a liberal, and you, and you know how stupid they are, so you really got to be detailed. I won't interrupt. I might go, duh, once in a while. You know, just to make sure, you, to remind you that I'm a liberal. Explain to somebody that follows Obama off the cliff and swears by Obamacare. I had one guy tell me that um, his uh, his premium went down $800. He's got kids, thanks to Obamacare. And I said, I want to see the paperwork on that. It blows my mind. I look at the exchange plans, and ours would go up astronomically compared to what we're paying now, and it and it covers less. So if you actually went to Obamacare, you're being fined, or you're being tormented financially because you don't have Obamacare. But if it you would be worse if we had to go on to Obamacare. Right. All right. So I'm a liberal. My name is. Um, I don't think of a name. Eric. It's Eric. Eric's a good liberal name. And uh, I say to you, hey, what do you mean your costs have gone up in Obamacare? Man, my family's saving like $700. 
a month from my private insurance. You know, we got like five kids, and a couple of them are sick. Well, you must be getting a raw deal from your, your private insurance. You need to go to Obamacare. What's wrong with Obamacare? Liberal stops. Well, what's wrong with Obamacare is that um, the exchanges don't cover specialists in schwartzman diamond syndrome or mitochondrial disease. We've looked at the exchanges, and they don't cover that. So if you don't have a child with chronic illness, it may not matter to you which doctor. But we like our doctors, and we wouldn't be able to keep our doctors if, if we were on the exchange. I heard, so, I heard him say, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. And Obama would never lie. Uh, now, liberal, liberals not. You can uh, go ahead. That's when I ask, are you smoking crack? <laughs> <laughs> it's covered on Obamacare. Oh, thank you for making me yeah. laugh. Well, it's, I mean, that's the only, the only thing. I don't know. If, sometimes on my blog I have a crack pick of the day. I haven't done that in a while because with Obamacare and all of my kids' health care uh, issues, I don't have time to blog, but... It's, I mean, that's the only thing. They're either drinking the Kool-Aid and simultaneously smoking crack or pot or something, because I don't know how their math isn't our math. It boggles my mind. Either that or they don't have to use their insurance, and so they don't know that they're getting screwed because they think, well, you know, this is so great. It's like, but did you look at the benefits? Like, right. none of your medications are covered. So they may, you know, and, and I'm just saying, it may entirely be possible that they're saving money on their plan because I've looked at the plan. And we could take a really crappy plan that would cost about what we're paying now. Nothing's covered. So what's the point? Right. And having it. And then the 1700, and I think it was 1776, and I joked that it was called the Freedom Plan. It's called the Freedom to Die Plan. <laughs> um, yeah, $1,776 a month, right, in premiums. Who can eat after that? You couldn't put gas in your no, car after paying that. That's, that's more but, than um, mortgage. And then nothing's covered. So you, that, now that's the Obamacare. Yes, that's a, because I, you know, we we just found out that we will have benefits next year. We don't know the numbers until October 26th when open enrollment um, begins because we've been so paranoid. I mean, you want to prepare, like, okay, so if we have to go on to an exchange plan, how do we plan? That's why we're up here right now. My son has surgery on Monday because we planned it because we didn't know we would have insurance next year. And then when I get back to North Carolina, my other son has to have a surgery. And, you know, we're, we feel a little bit relieved that we're going to have insurance, but we know we're going to, it's going to be worse than what we have this year because there's no, there's just no way the math doesn't add up. So for the next person that steps into the White House, unless Obama becomes emperor with the help of uh, ISIS, which don't laugh, it could happen. Um, how do they get rid of Obamacare and undo this mess? Like so first, first we need Congress to step up. We need Congress to step up and defund it and delay it. Mm -hmm. They missed their opportunity last year. I went to every single senator's office, every single representative's office. I brought them copies of bills, of our medical bills, copies of letters from our employer, and I brought them information on defunding Obamacare. I went to every single one. And let me tell you, some of the people, I mean, you know. Schumer's office and then, you know, Charlie Rangel's office, they looked at me like I was Medusa when I walked through the door, like, what is this lady doing in here? <laughs> but, I mean, I went to every one of their offices. We need them to defund it, to delay it, and full repeal. And then we need to have, you know, I, I tell you right now, go to Heritage Heritage Foundation and Freedom Works. If you want answers to every single one of these problems, go to freedomworks.org and Heritage Dot org. And down? they have the plan. We have think tanks that, 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 that have the free market plans in place. And that's, I mean, hey, if I was president, that's where I would go. And I would say, here, how do we fix this? Well, the new person that comes in, uh, whoever it may be, and right now you don't hear anything, you don't hear much about that. I mean, all you hear about is Ebola. Of course, Ebola is important, but the problem is Barack Hussein Obama. Barack will not stop that air traffic. And here's the, the thing. The flights coming out of West Africa that will eventually end up in the United States have doubled from 80 a week and are now up to 140 a week. And but the these... taking temperatures, it'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. If they had taken Michael Duncan's temperature the minute he landed, he wouldn't have shown any signs of Ebola and he still would have roamed the streets. Well, I mean, you can take ibuprofen to reduce your fever 
you know, That's true. were somewhat symptomatic. I mean, hello. That's true. You know, it's. Oh, I, this, this whole thing, the ineptitude of our government and then the people in Dallas, it's shocking. It, 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 it blows my mind. And just this, I mean, well, anyway, don't trust your government. I, I don't trust the government, but there's too many people who trust the government. Well, they trust now, see, because government's been divided. It used to be 40 years ago, don't trust the government, that's any government. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or a Republican. Don't trust any of them. Now, it's don't trust the conservatives. Liberal is the way to go. See, that's where Obama has divided us, and he's divided us to a point where non-thinking human beings uh, just follow whatever he says. The people that really understand the change... The change wasn't good. The only change Obama made with me was in my pocket. Now I had change instead of dollar bills. Okay? Four million unemployed. Four million unemployed more than when he took office January of uh, 2009. Well, and a big part of that has to do with Obamacare because most small business owners that have 50 employees or more, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was the number, um, have to provide some form of health insurance package for their employees and the bottom line is the small business owner if they don't get the insurance premium rates that the fortune 500 companies get because they do not have the number of employees to bring down the cost and so that's where the unemployment's coming in why not cut your employment you know your number of employees down so that you don't have to offer health insurance, why not cut them down to part-time? Because if they're part-time, I don't think that they have to be offered um, a health insurance package. So, I mean, it, it stinks, you know, and I'm sure a lot of these employers, these small business owners don't want to do that. And most of them are small business owners for a reason. They want to be able to provide for the mom and pops and, and, and the locals and, and, you know, just your your good hometown kind of people, and and they probably can't now. They probably can't, and and I think that has to do with the unemployment rate. Well, if you want to tie an Ebola to Obamacare, look at what's happening in the hospital. There was an article today, I, and I posted it on Facebook. I, I don't remember what it was from, but the hospital in Nebraska, that's the premier Ebola center, yeah. they had to lay off people, and now they don't have enough staff take care of the Ebola patients that have been sent there. Unbelievable. And that's all. And, and our local hospital laid off 2,000. So the infrastructure that they keep telling you is okay, we've laid off too many health care workers. Yeah. We, we wouldn't be able to handle any kind of outbreak of Ebola, and a lot of it has to do with Obamacare. And that, that, that free uh, airplane ride where you don't have to tell the truth. You know, all you got to do is fill out. Now, I haven't had contact with anybody with a disease, and, and you're in America by way of Belgium. <clears throat> but the U.K. won't let them in. France won't let them in. Uh, other African countries have refused admission to anybody from West uh, Western Africa in the infected area. Now, if Obama thinks it's racist to do it, and he would say that, because then the liberals will repeat it. They're parrots. Well, it's a, you can't do that. I get that all the time. But why? It would stop. It would stop. I don't know. And they go, how do you know the, the, the West Africans are bringing it in? Well, because an airborne disease suddenly, uh, weird people who wouldn't fly in from West Africa are starting to pick it up. You know, there, there is start, it's starting to be a story a day, and the World Health Association has said, by Thanksgiving, with open borders, there will be 10,000 new cases a week. You think we got the uh, hospital workers to cover that? Oh, absolutely not. Like I said, today we were at the hospital, and the, the, everybody's talking, I mean, because everybody's talking about Ebola. And the hospital workers don't feel prepared. Now they did. For the first time, they asked us if we've been outside of the country in the last. In anybody in our household has been outside of the country in the last 30 days? And I joked, my husband's a pilot, but he's a corporate pilot. And I said, well, he wasn't out of the country, but he was in Dallas two days after Duncan was diagnosed with Ebola. So he was out of. He was never around that terminal because corporate airlines 
or some, you know, airplanes are in another right. section. But it, I don't, I mean, look how easy it is to, you know, to transmit this disease. I mean, that's just one, one person on one airplane. And I, I just, my, my son is a trip because he asked me the other day, he said, has Obama watched Contagion, the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it, but, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody dies in the end. But he asked me that, and I said, well, I don't know. Maybe somebody should send him a copy. There you go. Hey, you know, maybe we should send him a copy. Yeah. Well, courtesy of the uh, Dr. Testicus. Yeah, and then the Secret Service will be here. Oh, yeah. well, you know, whatever. <laughs> Not that I can they're probably already listening. I'm already on the list. I, I was going to say, they're probably already listening we've to already, us anyway. It doesn't even matter. We've already caught him listening to us. I've begged him to try to do his job. I mean, you know, I, I, I just, it, my whole thing is, when you take the office of the presidency of the United States, you have to make choices for the country that not everyone is going to like. And they're tough choices. And if you're not prepared to make choices where people are very much going to dislike you, but it is in the best interest of the citizens of the country, then you need not apply for the position. You need not take the oath of office. But he and hasn't done anything in the best interest of the that, country. That's what I'm saying. So, you oh, know, if I don't think that he's ever going to do anything in the best interest of America. It's not who he is. I no, think no, no. He is here uh, because of his Muslim roots. He's lied for six years. He still can't convince people that he lied. And, and I'm talking about uh, the liberals, everybody else. I mean, the libertarians, the independents, everybody knows he's a liar. When he went on TV and said, first of all, ISIL, because he's got a different group in mind, it's ISIS. ISIL is not Islamic. And he looked dead in the eye. And I went, well, what does that first letter stand for? Now he calls it uh, the Islamic State. But he looked like a jackass. People laugh at the guy that we got as president. He is unequipped. He was a pot-smoking, coke-snorting uh, child of the 70s and 80s. And then he wanted to be a community organizer. He was a senator, terrible, never went to any of the sessions, just like he's doing as president. And people voted for him. I just was like, God, do you people hate George Bush that much? You know? Yeah, he, he makes Carter look like a presidential genius. You know who criticized him? <laughs> That's scary, but it's true. You know who criticized uh, Obama uh, just recently was Jimmy Carter. Jimmy uh, Carter. Wasn't that something? I mean, I died laughing when that came out in the news. I thought, this is really, really I, pathetic. I said, if the town, if the village idiot is calling you stupid, then, you know, don't write him off as some southern bigot. Well, Jimmy Carter is from Georgia, say the uh, liberals. He hates black people. I said, well, that may be. I don't think he hates anybody. He's a good Christian man. But uh, Obama's not black. Stop with the race card. This is another word I think should be stricken. Racist. It's being used to push Obama's policies through. It's not being used in the, term, in the terms that it was intended for. And that means any time black person yells racism, I'm not buying it. I've stopped. I have a bumper sticker on my car, and it says, I'm not racist. I don't like Biden either. <laughs> hey, but you got to admit, Crazy Uncle Joe is one funny son of a gun. I don't know. If, yeah. You know, he, uh, he, he said he was going to chase ISIS to the gates of hell. I mean, I have to give him credit for that. Except yeah. you can't, how do you chase him when you're not going to, yeah, go across the border? I, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but I have to give him credit. At least he showed somewhat, you know, a, a bit of leadership quality, unlike the president at that time. Who so, says ISIS? You know. I, still, they were the JV. They're nothing to worry about. You know, he didn't believe that. He knew what ISIS could do. He also knew what pulling all the troops out of uh, Iran was going to do because the same thing happened in Libya. He helped kill, and the guy hadn't done nothing wrong in God knows how long. He was old and senile, Muammar Gaddafi. Muammar Gaddafi just became a running joke, and he went in uh, with others of the same mindset and uh, bombed the hell out of Libya at, at a peacetime in Libya's history, um, and, of course, those people, Muslims, uh, beat and killed him because it's, <laughs> excuse me, a religion of peace. And then there was no leader. 
So he installed the Muslim Brotherhood. And I wanted to scream, the Muslim Brotherhood is peaceful, the liberals would yell. No, they're not. They read the Koran. The Koran is a book of death. Excuse me, I'm getting too upset. The Koran. Well, peaceful people don't behead other people. I'm, you know, yeah, that would be the first clue. And, you know, peaceful people don't cut off lim women's limbs if they catch them driving. Peaceful people don't stone to death rape victims. You know, that's not what peaceful people do. Uh, Islam is not a religion of peace. It's a religion of war. And in the Koran, it says to kill or commit jihad against anybody who refuses to become like them. All right? There you go. And so they have every reason in the world, I don't trust anybody. I, I'm sorry, and I don't trust them, and I haven't trusted them since the Iran hostage crisis. And now it was my first year on the radio. Yeah, I'm old, okay? <laughs> but uh, I, I wish you and your family... The very best. I, I hope yes. that you made some sense. And to those that call us racist, I would vote for Dr. Ben Carson right now to first take over the CDC and then be in line for a VP or a presidential slot in 2016. Because the man makes sense, and he's shunned by his own community. He won't get the black vote. And they're not going to vote for Republicans, so they're just going to stay home. He's shunned because he is not a Democrat. He sees things, and he's like me. I'll vote for the best guy. I voted for Bill Clinton because I loved Bill Clinton. And look what he did, man. He got rid of the deficit, which was uh, he inherited from the senior Bush, which was outrageous. Yeah, okay, so Obama gets a uh, you know a nine trillion dollar deficit from Junior Bush. And he turns that into a $19 trillion deficit, but it's Bush's fault. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, I know. I mean, it's government. I, I'm kind of um, kind of down on, on, on government in general. We need a revolution. Thomas Jefferson, Amen. Once, uh, Thomas Jefferson once said that for any country to succeed, you need a revolution every 30 years. And throw out the existing policies and get new blood in there. And that's what elections were supposed to do, but elections have become, the word I hate, racially driven. I wish you and your family all the best. I'm sorry Obamacare has affected private health insurance to this, this way. You know, I'm not saying any race whatsoever, but let's just say I'm white and I'm filling out a job application. And I'll check white. And then right underneath it, it says other. The others are having babies because the more babies they have, Obamacare drops down, to, in, in some cases, to free. So Obama has enslaved them to be, you know, have you know, eight kids just to get free health care. And Obama has enslaved you for choosing to keep your, uh, keep your health plan, and yet making sure that the charges on your health plan are outrageous. So he's got us all. And the only thing we can hope for is that uh, Eric, uh, his buddy. Eric Holder? Yes, the head of the, D, uh, the DOJ, mm -hmm. does finally leave office after Obama fired him. Mean, he keeps coming back to work. It's like a Seinfeld episode. Remember uh, the uh, Seinfeld episode where George Costanza got fired from a job and uh, he just kept coming back every day acting like it didn't happen? <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. You remember that one? Well, you know what? Eric Holder's become uh, George Costanza because he got fired as attorney general, yet shows up to work every day as the head of the DOJ. So you can't get Obama with him sitting in the way. Uh, let me tell you something. We'll keep an eye on your situation. Do you have any TV appearances lined up? No, I got not not right now. Okay, but you've been on. I was. I was on Fox and Friends. Um, gosh, it's been a week and a half now. Okay. Yeah, we actually have the clip up on our Facebook page, I think. So. Uh, can you imagine? Oh, well, she goes on that, that damn the Fox show. 
that's all they have. They, they like I, I get people that attack me that will say, well, because my blog is Catholic Tea Party hippie, and so oh well, of course you're just a conservative, so and you're Tea Party, so that's why you're going after Obama. And I'm, I'm like, you know, if Obamacare was really that great and brought our costs down, I wouldn't be out there showing people my medical bills. I mean, I have pictures of the medical bills, the letters, everything on my blog, and so it has nothing to do with being conservative. Or, I mean, you know what I'm saying, for, as far as our situation, it's what Obamacare is doing to us, and I'm speaking the truth. But that happens when you come forward with the truth. People will, you know. Hey, man, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, the people that support uh, Barry do not like the truth, and you're always lying. And it can really get hurtful sometimes, and you really have to watch your temper. And I'm sure you've had to go through it because this affects your children. I just ignore them. If you go on my Facebook page, which I think I liked one of your comments, and you should be able to see, I have a, a public folder, and, and you'll laugh because it, they, I've saved some of the best tweets that people have said in response to my op-ed and, and to my interview on Fox, and, and you'll crack up. You'll, you'll really, it'll make you laugh. You just don't eat or drink anything because I almost choked on a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. And, uh, please Thanks so much. Have a great day. Let's stay in touch, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you.